everyone? Are we live? Okay, we're live now. I, I started before we even went on. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Now, this is quite sad because it's my last one for the moment, just for the moment, and we will be back um, in a few weeks' time, start again. In between time, I'm going to be filming a series for ITV, um, so it's going to be very exciting. And uh, But today, I want to do something different. Um, I wanted to teach you a little bit about steaks. Now, I know I just said um, get a ribeye steak, etc. But I'm going to do a few steaks with you because I think it's actually quite important. Um, so I'll get them from here. I went to my local butcher and I got these from my local butcher here, which we know. And he does the best meat ever. And it's all from around here. It's all lovely, and I cannot tell you how beautiful that looks. Okay, and do tell me where you're coming from. I think everybody's going to be outside. I'd be surprised if we had masses of people in because it's been such a beautiful day, and I think and I think everybody would have been for walks and things like this. So, anyway, do say where you're coming from, etc., and where you're going. But it has been simply amazing to be able to go out. Heather and Zach in Northern Ireland say hello. Hello, Heather and Zach. How are you? Thank you for coming on. I hope you've had a lovely day today because that's been gorgeous. Now, so here we have a sirloin. Now, a sirloin, it can be called a strip loin as well. So a sirloin is one of the best pieces of cuts you can get. Now, when you're looking for steak, you look for the fat on top and the marbling. Now, if the fat is creamy, it means it's a really good steak in terms of being husbandry, looked after and developed. And you get a lovely, rather than bright white, when it's bright white, it's a fast fed, get it out quick. But when it's got this lovely creamy fat, it says it's been well bred and I've, it's been bred the way I like it. Now, they obviously been outside and then they would bring it in for... A short period of time just to get it going now so that's what that is and that is really an important part now here you've got all the lovely marbling but not so much but you've got enough that it creates the moisture and the fat within the actual steak itself but it is a prime cut now the other piece of steak i've got which is the ribeye now the ribeye is something slightly different which has got the fat going through here You've always got that bit of fat and you've got a lot of marbling now this is why it's incredibly important that you get a really well hung piece of ribeye because this will produce the best steak it's the most flavorsome steak i think of all because it is it's obviously got that fat through it's got the flavor it's juicy you've got to rest it well very very important to rest it well even even more, I think, than these two, the billet and the sirloin. This is very important, but I absolutely adore it. And it's it's a great size. Look, you've got a great, see how thick it is, not a thin piece. Now, what you can do is, if you don't want much protein, uh, too much stuff, you can actually cut it, slice it that way at the end. So that can do for two people, which will be great. So it's plenty. Um, or if you're very hungry, you can have a whole one, but they are large steaks, these. These are very big. Now, the other steak here is the fillet. Now, the fillet is uh, the uh, the lovely sort of strip underneath the ribs, underneath the soy line coming at the back. And it is the most succulent piece. But the flavor-wise... I think for me, the ribeye has the flavor. It beats it in terms of taste. But the tenderness of this and the flavor, I'm not going to, you know, the flavor, it's delicious, but it's so tender, but it doesn't do any work. When, I, when a piece of meat does more work, it's a little bit more fatty. It has, it's worked like a shoulder. Shoulder has to work a lot more. So I think it's really important to get something that works a bit more, that gives it a bit more flavour. So Rosemary, we've got uh, a few things, a few shout outs. So uh, Kate in Bamburgh, they have an amazing butchers there. Our Carter and Sons, possibly one for the future. 
Oh, hi, Kate. Hi. Well, I hope you've got the most wonderful yeah. steak like I've got. I'm sure you have. Still in New York. Oh, hi, Tim again. <laughs> You're becoming a regular. Well, don't worry. We won't be gone for long, okay? We won't be gone. You'll hear when we're back. We'll send we'll send Facebook news when we're back online, when we're going for it. And with them, we'll have another three-month stint, which will be great. Tiffany Blake, it's her birthday today. Shout out for her, please. Happy birthday, Tiffany. Happy birthday. I hope you have the love year. And what a treat to have some steak. Now, you don't have to eat this immediately. If you want to eat a bit later, because... It's a bit early, to be honest with you. So you could just start it off and finish it off in the oven. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. We've got time because this is a very simple meal. But actually, it's, a, it's very important. This is where something is great and something is OK. So it's knowing the proper way to do it. So that's why I want to do it. We're also going down the Argentinian um, uh, road to actually make a chimichurri sauce, which is a chili, very strong chili vinaigrette, very vinegary, and I simply love it. And it's a lovely thing if you're doing a barbecue, something like that, it really works like green. So I think we're going to do that. Made with parsley, marjoram, red wine vinegar, chili, olive oil, and seasoning, salt. Quite a bit of salt, because it's quite important again. Now, um, and I actually have got some um, oregano, some fresh oregano, rather than some dried oregano. So I'm quite pleased with that. But if it's dried, like I said, use dried. So it's probably better to leave it for an hour or two. So we'll do that first of all. So let's just finish these steaks for the moment. So when you're doing a fillet, it's much better to have the fillet really rare. Now, the trick is... What you mustn't do, and it's what people do, if you've got a thick piece here, which is going to be cut, that's going to be cut that way, that is not a piece of fillet for somebody to eat. I mean, not a piece of, that's not a piece of um, sirloin for somebody to go and eat. This is a piece where I'm going to cut it like, uh, um, uh, crossways. So it'll be, it's a slightly different presentation. Um, you would actually have, for a steak each, you would have half that, obviously. Now, so we got that. Is yes. It's important to let the steak go up to room temperature before cooking them off. Oh, yes. I was just about to get there. They got there before me. Now, the other thing is, um, I always take my steaks out of the fridge an hour before, which is really important. And that goes for any meat at all. I take all my meat out of the fridge or even fish before I cook it because it cooks much better. Imagine if you've got something cold all over. You're just going to keep the cold up, the outside up, and then you can't get inside because you're going to have to cook it too long for the outside. That is the trick. You actually, those who asked me a question got in there before. I didn't want to say that immediately, but one of the things was, if this was coming straight from the fridge, um, or I would talk about this one, or even this one, you, you actually will get too high a crust on it. The trick is not to get too thick a crust. You don't want a steak to be, to be like that because that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a steak that's got a nice caramelization on the outside. But if it's too cold, you have to leave it in the pan for too long. So that's one of the reasons. It gives it a much even, more even cook. Um, you know, cook, get it ready to get it done. Now, a steak, temperature-wise, I think needs to be 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Now, if you've got a meat thermometer, which I have here, I always say, hang on, which I did have, and I do have somewhere. Uh, where's my meat thermometer? Uh, I have a thing. Oh, here it is. Now, I've got a meat thermometer. Now, this is the most fantastic, fantastic piece of kit. Now, for instance, if you're doing a piece of roast beef, it's always good to be able to stick this in. And you look at it, and you see there on your digital, um, it has to be 50, 50 degrees. Now, you know that if you're going to leave it out, it's going to go up another five degrees. So you need to remember that. So... For me, for me, I will. I wouldn't normally use it, but I will show you when I'm doing these, so you'll get a better idea. So I think these are useful for me, 
and they'll be useful for you doing this so you know but when i'm doing a joint like lamb which needs to be a bit more that needs to be 60. so when i'm doing things like lamb or beef or anything it's quite good to get something like this because you don't have to guess guessing is not the right way to go so and if you're not used to it if you haven't got the experience so now so the most important thing is resting Resting is paramount. You've got to leave at least 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes at the end of cooking. So you put it over a grid, you cover it with tin foil, you let all the juices go. Now, the other thing you have to do, if you're going to cut it, you need to put it on a tray and a cloth. You see, because the blood will start coming out of it, juices will start, and then your plate will be covered with, with uh, juices, which you don't want. In fact, can I have... Um, a cloth and a tray, do you think, Martin? A tray to put these on when I cut them. So basically, so otherwise, what will happen, you can use a tea towel, I use a J-cloth, and you can actually, so, so when it goes onto the plate, you've got a clean plate with no juices there, still the same as it is, but your presentation is better. So let's just carry, let's just get going. I hope some of you have got on now. Good, everybody got, but don't do your steak until the end because okay. I'm going to be doing, showing you how to. So the first thing we've got to do is the chimichurri sauce. Now, I have got here, you probably have already got this done. So I've cut, okay, some parsley. It's very, very uh, herby. Now look at that. I've put some lovely, look at that, oregano. Delicious. I saw some in the shops the other day, which is lovely. Now I've got some salt. Now coarse sea salt, because that will melt with the vinegar. Now I'm going to put, before I put the oil in, I'm going to put the vinegar in. Okay, so we're going to put that first, vinegar. So the reason for that, because it will melt, as I said, the salt. Right, there we go. Now I've got some garlic here. Crush crush. Now, do you remember, right at the beginning, just make sure it's all finely chopped. Now, finely chopped with this place, this, this dish, is very important because I, Martin and I had a spat earlier. We actually had a spat and, and basically somebody did it for me beautifully, but not quite fine enough. And, and I'll say why, because what is important and he thinks I'm very awkward, but I'm a perfectionist. Now, the reason why I want it fine, because it's look, got to look very pretty, it's like, um, it's more than a marinade, it's like a sauce. So I want this very, very fine. Just keep going. Get it really fine. And if yours isn't fine enough, please get it fine. And if you've got a problem, just put it in a processor. Don't worry, just put it in a processor. Yeah, Martin and I are a bit like a married couple. It's so strange. <laughs> right. Okay. Off we go. Keep going. It's not fine enough. Not fine enough. You'll say, oh, but it's fine. No. Don't do a Martin on me. Not on this. Before you cook. No, yeah, oh, on the step of the steak. Sorry, I thought you were going to say garlic. I was going to drink before. Right. On the garlic, uh, on the steaks, yes, but I'm not going to do it until I'm ready to cook. Because obviously, I don't mind doing it if you want to do it now, but there's no point. It sort of draws the water out. I think Martin's got me to get me some trays or something. He has. Oh. Oh, lovely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's not a paste. It's very, very fine. Right, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. Okay, everybody, look at that. Look, I'm going to go like that. Okay, you can see. Okay, good. That's important. Right, I'm now going to pop this in here. Now, with the chilli, I'm just going to redo this a little bit more. It's not quite fine enough. Okay. 
person who did this was very sweet. And I was so happy, but not quite happy enough. <laughs> Hotter. Yeah, you can do what you want. Well, how hot should you have to make it? Right, as hot as you want, but I wouldn't do it any hotter. Because sort of there's so two chi red chilies, there's two red chilies here. Now, can you see the difference here? Look, can you now see the difference? Oh, for goodness sake, you lot. It's smaller. Yeah. Look at the fineness, guys. Look. Look at the difference. See, Martin? Uh, eat your words. <laughs> he loves steak. Martin loves steak. Right, there's a lot of chili there. I know how to make him happy. Stop it. Stop it. Right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I'm going to recap. Everything you've done so far. Yeah. Now, we're just going to pour in, before I recap, I'm just going to pour in the olive oil. How much of that was that? About four, four tablespoons. Now, this is quite a thick paste. Hmm? No, 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 it's fine. Now, I'm going to put some on a little plate so they can see it. Can you get me a little plate, Martin? A little, um, can you get me one? Right, okay, guys. Right, what we're going to do, just a little one, just so I can, we're just going to. Oh, good girl. I think I'm going to pour a drink too. Right, let me just show you this. Oh, actually, I've got some red wine here. Right, I'm just going to show you guys, look. Is yours like that? Yeah, let me just taste it. I haven't tasted it yet. So. Oh. That is actually, quite frankly, delicious. Now, I'm going to put in, can you let me some sugar? Please. Could you give people a bit of a background to why, why you picked the cumin curry sauce and where it comes from? Argentina. So what it is, I think it's, it's Argentina. Yeah. So we're going to put some sugar in there just to take, just to bring the flavour out. So now, what I think is sort of Argentinian sort of um, sauce. Um, it's quite vinegary, strong. Um, they do that sort of thing down there, um, and quite frankly, it's delicious, especially when you're doing a barbecue. But let me just recap how I did it. All I did was put, put the um, parsley, very finely chopped parsley, finely chopped marjoram, but, but you would have had dried. I put dried in the recipe, it's fine. I mean, oregano. Finely chopped, sorry, finely chopped oregano. Although if you have marjoram, actually quite similar. Then um, garlic, a couple of garlic, big garlic cloves they were too, which is great. Um, a couple of long big chilies or three chilies did I do? I think I did. But a, a lot of chili, but cut very finely. And um, you end up with, I put the vinegar in first to melt the sugar. I mean, the vinegar first to melt the uh, sea salt, because the sea salt being coarse sea salt, you had to melt that first, like putting a bit of lemon on or something. Um, and then I put the oil in last. So the whole thing amalgamated together has created this quite, frankly, this gorgeous sort of vinegar, tasty. And I put a teaspoon of sugar in there. That's not in the recipe, but I put it in. So I'm going to leave that there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to do the cabbage. So let's get these things out of the way. Um, so cabbage. Oh, thanks, Martin. So first thing I'm going to do is, now, I'm sure some of you have shredded your cabbage already because that's what I asked you to do. So I'm just going to take the bottom off. 
I'm going to show you how I shred my cabbage. What I do is I actually take the core out first and I do it like that. Now, by doing this, there we are, I actually make it easier to shred and I'm going to use the whole thing. Not sometimes I would leave, I would use, leave the outer leaves, but I'm not going to because I think it's nice. You actually can um, cook with these little things as well. They're with a little core going through. You can actually do something with them for a stir fry, for instance. They're very good. So if you've got a stir fry tomorrow, keep them for goodness sake, because they are quite frankly delicious. So I'm going to go on with this. Right, now we're getting down to this bit. I'm going to do this slightly differently because I, these are quite fine cores here. So I'm just going to do this like that. All right, I'm going to just do that little bit there. So do you see what I'm doing? So I'm keeping that there because it's not very thick. So you talked about the outer leaves. I'm going to take all these leaves off and I'm going to just chop them in half like that. There you are. Chiffonade, that's fine. They chiffonade it, that's fine. Chiffonade, that's what I asked you to do, finally shred. And well done for doing that. I'm just showing you a way how you chiffonade the people who don't know how to chiffonade. But I'm going to do quite chiffonade, quite um, big chiffonading, which is basic to the, uh, to the normal person. It's just shredding. Um, it's French, so that's cool. That's good. I like the fact you said chiffonading. Okay. John Paul Warrenow said, did your mum ever give you a sugar sandwich which had lettuce on it sprinkled with sugar between two bits of bread? No. Are you saying that's what you had when you were young? So. Wow. Was it good? Well, we'll find out in a minute. And Susanna Melody said, would you ever cook a Turkish dish one night? Yes. And how? And how? Now, I'm going to just put this... Oh. Pop it in there for a second. Um, and how? Absolutely, without question. Now, what I'm doing is to cut them all together. I'm not doing fine chiffonading. So you can do any size you want. I'm doing thick. Look, really thick. That's what I want. I want big pieces. And I should have said that in the recipe, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So if you've done it finely, seriously. Now, when it comes to the outer leaves, just go like that, okay, again, outer leaves, and I'm not going to waste this green, beautiful green, so I like the two-tone colour, there we are, now all you do is put these on top, very simple, roll, roll, all right, and then cut, there we are. How easy is that? Now I know it's even all over. Let's do that. Right, I think let's not waste anything. Waste not what not. Come on, let's just do that. Oh, I bet you anything, it's just raw. Oh, delicious. Put that there, I'm not gonna punch him. Right, now. Dummy. Great in a salad, guys. Mmm. Middle of that cabbage. Now, here we go. Now, I have got some water on here. And what I'm going to do, can you put the, can you put it on, please? Now, I'm going to put the cabbage. Let me just show you. Yes. Yes, please. They can turn their ovens on to, uh, now, we're not doing it just so I would wake. All right, I'll turn them on to one, 170. Just mark, five, yeah. just mark five. Now, let's just hang on. So, we're just going to boil these up. I'm just going to wait for that to boil because I don't want to, I don't want to uh, just carry through with lots of different things. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of thyme in there as well. When I boil, I'm going to soak that with a bit of thyme actually. Now, okay, so what I'm going to do. I've got some onion here. Now, the cabbage is made with onion, 
garlic, honey, and some bacon. Yeah, this is lovely. And some smoky, it's smoky bacon. So I wanted it, I wanted something quite strong because the chimichurri sauce is actually quite strong. So I wanted something that was going to balance with it. Because if I had had something really mild, it would totally kill it. No question about it. No question. So what we've got to do here, just going to take all the rind off. Oopsie, my knife isn't sharp enough. Ooh, can't believe this. I haven't got a sharp knife. Okay, let's get this away and sharpen my knife. So. Okay, let's get this on. So I'm going to get this lower one on. Can you see this lower one? Okay, good. Okay, well, I'll get everything ready then. I'm just going to put this on. Yes, but actually, no. It's all right. Nah. Right, I'm just going to sharpen this knife. What's the best way to sharpen the knife, Rosemary? Right. <laughs> They're, they're having a joke because Martin, poor Martin, Martin didn't know how to sharpen the knife. So I had to teach him. So we went through it. So what you do is very, very softly, you do it so it rests on the top of your steel. Then you take your corner to the end. Now, what you do is you have to lift it up slightly. If you lift it up like that, you're going to blunt it. If you lift it up slightly so it's beveled, just bevel at an angle and not too much because you want to get a, an edge on it. So you literally go like that and you go to the end. And when you go underneath, do the same thing. What you must not do is turn the knife around. You just go top, bottom, top, bottom. So we'll just... Okay. Now, if you do your knife like this, so some people do it like that, like that, Okay, I do it like that. And if you do it yours or so, do not let anybody sharpen the knife for you. That is a no no. That's a no no. Poor oh, Martin. No, he's been very, he's been, I've been very nice to him. Haven't I, Martin? <laughs> of course, you're always nice to me, you're brave. Thank you. No time to read this thing, Edward. <laughs> no, sweet. I love my Freddy. Right, so we're going to pop this on. Right, when we go in, we I miss him. When we go in, he's lovely. And then it's my granddaughter's birthday this week, Tuesday, I think. It's very exciting. I got her something really nice. Right, so we're going to take this, separate it. So what this is giving is a lovely, lovely flavor. All right, this will, well, but now the garlic is something else. I'll do that in a minute. A bit of oil. I think I've got a tiny bit of oil in my pan for the bacon, just a little bit, not much, because the oil, rapeseed oil. Okay, far, rapeseed, do? olive oil. Okay, there we go. Pop it in. Perfect. Now I'm going to pop in the onion with it, okay? Right, we're going to now move it around a bit. Okay? And get this really cooked off. Really cooked off. We'll take this off in a minute, this pan, that pan. We'll take it off in a minute. Right, just get that done. Now, as soon as this is boiling, I'm going to pop the um, cabbage into there, okay? So let's just do the garlic. Okay. Right. So we're just going to do this. Now, are you all on top of it with me? Are you all with me? Yeah, they all seem to be. Can you give a shout out to Lewis Boyd? He's looking forward to his rare fillet tonight. Oh! 16 on Friday. Oh, happy birthday, Lewis. And enjoy your stick. Have you got a ribeye? Did you get a ribeye? That is... That's a rare fillet. 
Oh, how lovely. So like mine. Oh, how lovely. We're all having lovely steak. It's a real treat. But steak is a little bit cheaper at the moment, I think. Just a tad cheaper. Now, what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay. Right. Not as fine as my chimichurri sauce. Chimichurri sauce. Right, in we go. Guys, I'm going to put the green in first. Oopsie. Then I'm going to put in this one. There we go. Pop it all in. Perfect. I'm leaving some out. Right, we're going to pop this in. Just cook it for a, literally a minute, not even that. Just to bring it up. There we are. Because I have it be steamed rather than what you're doing. For it can be yet. steamed. Yes, yes, yes. Be steamed. No problems. Yeah. Steam it. Right, we're just going to. Right, what I need to do now is just let it on a very high heat to brown its stuff, brown the thing. Now, what is important here is I must not put the garlic in yet because I do not want to burn, burn it. So I'm just going to put it in that. Okay, there we go. Put there, there. Perfect. I'm now going to take this off here. Oh, Rosemary, Bobby Jones. It's this, it's, um, it's her, his, I think, or her, I'm not sure. Oh, 70th. Bobby Jones, 70th. Happy birthday, fellow 70th. It's fantastic. That's so nice. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a lovely day. I have the best day on my birthday. I have a really good day. Really good day. So good. So, now, I've got a treat to tell you. While this is really cooking, I've got to get this in. I've got to get a colander. Can you get me a colander, please, for my cabbage? So, Rosemary, what's your favourite cup of meat? That's actually really interesting. For a steak. For a steak. Oh, I think by far the ribeye. Why is that? Because it's the most flavoursome for me. Tasty. The most tastiest bit it's got the most marbling and i think it's the most utterly delicious steak ever and um it's simply gorgeous that's what i think anyway don't get me wrong i love fillet fillet's gorgeous but i think for flavor and we're talking about flavor here i don't think you can beat a ribeye i really don't as long as it's well hung now hanging is quite interesting because i think something does need to be hung <laughs> You know, luckily the alarm hasn't gone off yet. So that will happen. Yeah, that will happen. So we got to. Do it. So ribeye steak for me, please. But if you're talking about a joint of meat, a joint of meat, you're definitely. Oh gosh, I've got to put this in. You're definitely talking about a shoulder. I love shoulders. Shoulders to me are the tastiest. It's like I love the thighs on a chicken. It's my favourite. Shoulder, thighs on a chicken, all those sort of meats. Just the, all the meats that actually work the hardest. Meat or fish? Meat. Why? Because I'm a carnival. I am a carnival, sorry. And I suppose... Tonight's dish, there's no way you could do it with an alternative, like a vegetarian alternative. Oh, gosh, yes, if you Could want you, to do it. No, you couldn't. No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't. No. Um, you could have a um, a lovely sort of, I don't know, you could have a hamburger, a vegetarian hamburger, done with different beans and things like that. Why not? Mushrooms, beans, you know, anything like that. Okay. So I think that would be fine. But... No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do like vegetarian food. There's no doubt I do like vegetarian cooking, and I do do it because I don't think we, I don't think we need nearly as much meat as we used to. We really don't. We don't need, it's all, for me, it's all just, um, for me, the meat is, 
we just need a little bit more. Before, it was like a little bit less. And we don't have to have it every day of the week. So there's a day I always have vegetarian on one day, or maybe I'm just going to have, you know, a salad or something with something, because I think it's quite good enough. So it's a treat. I think this is a real treat. I think it's a real treat, but because it's a treat, you don't want to get it wrong. And that's what I feel about quite strongly about it. Now, so let's now put the garlic in. So, can you see that? Right, I'm now going to put in some bit of thyme. A little bit of thyme doesn't go amiss. I'm going to put in some seasoning, not too much because it's already got seasoning in the bacon. I mean, a bit salty in the bacon. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add the cabbage. Now, this cabbage is creamy. It's got a little bit of honey in it and it's got a little bit of cream fresh in it. So I'm going to put a little bit of honey around it. I'm also going to it'll counteract the vinegar ma marinade. Now, you'll counteract it. You'll put a little bit of this cream fresh, low fat cream fresh. I'm going to pop that in. Right. Rosemary, John Paul Morano asks, what is the best type of marinade for steak? Well, for me, there's all sorts of marinades. You know, just whatever you find that for me, there isn't actually a best type. There's, you know, I love sort of doing garlicky, a Mediterranean one, or I love doing an Indian one with yogurt and spices. It just depends. I can't give you an answer to that because it depends on what finish I want and what I want it to be like. So to answer your question, the answer is whatever you want, whatever flavor you fancy. To me, I particularly like um, something like a butterfly leg of lamb, which is delicious. Actually, can I have a little bit more of this some um, cream fresh, please? I just want a little bit more. Right. And it's nice to recap what you've got for tonight. Yep, I will. Yeah, and I'm finished with it now. I'm just going to take a little bit more. Thank you. I shall just finish it. Okay. Now, so I've just put a little bit more of this so uh, cream fresh in because I think it warrants it. So what I've done is, let me just taste it, and then I'm going to go over it again. There we are. Now, I can smell the garlic. I'm not going to cook it anymore because it will spoil it. So here goes. Little taste. A little taste. Rosemary, can you use cream fresh instead of, sorry, can you use Greek yogurt? Yes, cream yes, cream you can. Will that not make it a bit sour? No, no. Oh my God, that's delicious. Oh, God, that's delicious. Right. Okay. I'm putting in a little bit of a little bit of salt. So I'm going to just leave that there. All right, we'll put that on later. Now, in fact, I'll put this to one side. Right, steaks. So what am I going to do? Let's sit down for one minute. Because uh, Jimmy... Uh, what? Oh, what? I might finish early for the first time ever. <laughs> okay. So, our, chimney, our chimichurri sauce is done. Our cabbage is done. I'm going to serve the cabbage separately in a little dish for people because I think that will be perfect. And it's got a great flavor to go with this. Now, for this, for this sirloin, strip loin, sirloin, I'm going to start it in the on the top and then I'm going to cook the skin so it's first so it gets nice and crispy then I'm going to turn it over and I will do the sides but because it's quite thick I'm going to put it in the oven for about for about eight minutes now that's quite a long time but that's what I need to put it in so you'll see so let's just do one at a time so imagine you've got your barbecue, you've got your thick steak for two people, but you're not going to serve it like that. You're going to you're going to serve it, cut it across like that. So let's put on this one, and this is going to go. Choose something that's going to go in the oven. All right, 
that you can pop in the oven that you're cooking it on. You won't have this because I didn't ask you. I was asking, would have been asking you too much to get all these steaks. But I personally got it from my butchers, as I said, and I love choosing them. Jason, he is fabulous from Wadhurst. Mm -hmm. And it's called Crouches, if you're interested. And it's a very, very good butchers. Thank you. Um, as it's your last one, it's yeah. worth just mentioning some of the farm shops that we've definitely you've, you've had such great relationships. Yeah, with. first of all, um, Pol Pot and Penn down in Cornwall, they were fabulous, and I'm looking forward to actually catching up with them when I come back. Um, I also love talking, I also love communicating. I didn't do it on camera, but I loved commu communicating with the Cornish Duck Company. Now, who did in my book the best ducks ever, 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 ever. It's called the, the um, Cornish Duck Company. And you'll get whatever you go and go on their website and have a look. And it goes for all these farm shops as well. Go on their websites because they may have things that you haven't seen before. Now, the other thing is it's also finding your local shops as well. Druton's. Now, I think they were fabulous. And there's a couple of Druton, but they sell so much. And it's such a great thing to such a great thing to to uh, go to these places. I mean, that is why um, that is why I've done it, because I want people to find out about their local farm shops. Now, there's Fodders in Yorkshire. Fodders, um, which is which is lovely. I love Fodders. Um, so, in fact, uh, that is I think that is the. Um, uh, that's the main place for the Farm Shop Association, um, which is a retail association, which I'm dealing with. I love being partners with this uh, association because it, it, in my book, it, it, I believe in this ethos of locality and what it's all about and sustainability. I think, I remember when I was a child, I remember, I'm, I don't want to preach to you, but I remember going to the local shops loving them, loving every minute of, you know, talking to the people in the shops, finding out about what's in, what isn't in. I actually, I remember all this. Yeah, I even remember the rations too. <laughs> okay, so he's going to put the extractions off. Right, let's start off with the first one now. Okay, so this is our thick one. Salt it, both sides. And don't be, don't be shy salting, because salting, so, oh, oh, salting is really, salting is really important. So we're going to do its skin first. We're going to put it on its skin first, okay? So now, I want to sit for a moment because I want to take you through each one. Okay, so the most important thing here is, I mustn't move it. If I move it, I will spoil it. If I move it, I will break. I will break the skin. I will break it. Consequently, it will just not, it will just not work. It won't be as good. You won't have that even side. And also the water will start coming out of the juices, that is, will start coming out of it. So I need to avoid that. So avoiding it is not touching it. Now, the most obvious thing for everybody is to touch. See if you could actually go away, pour yourself a glass of wine, um, and see if you could actually, I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine. Let's not touch it. This is gorgeous, this wine. It's gorgeous wine. We got a glass. <laughs> oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right, so what we're going to do, so please do not touch. So pour yourself a glass of wine. And those young children, pour yourself a juice. Do what mummy and daddy are doing. Sip, perfect. Go for it. I love these screw tops, I really do. I was really snobby to begin with, saying, oh, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to go with screw tops. But you know what? They are so useful. They are so good. So, cheers. And thank you so much for being with me during this, during these months of lockdown and actually really enjoying myself. I've loved every minute. And you have been wonderful, you lot. Cheers. Thank you. We're going to ask everybody for their 
Mm. Some people have been on every time. Oh, yes. Will you tell me? Okay. Tell us, and we're going to, Mark's actually going to tell you. So, hang on, before we do that. I put oil in. I'm going to put butter in in a minute. Can we, is it possible to turn this off? Just a moment. Oh, doesn't it? Okay, well, no mind. I've got it on sort of quite lowish. So look, so you can see, okay, it's, I'm leaving it quite a long time. So now, see that? That's really nice, isn't it? So I'm going to leave it a bit longer because I want a bit browner. So patience. So start with your local, start with your favourite moments. Come on. So Amanda Collins says, cheers, Rosemary, for keeping our spirits up during lockdown. It's been brilliant. Amanda, it's a pleasure. You're a good friend. And thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Maybe one day I'll come up to Windermere and I'll come and stay with you. Actually, it might be quite, it might be soon, actually. So I'll um, I'll talk to you very soon. I'll give you a ring. I'll send you an email. Okay, first one, friend. <laughs> I've got somewhere to stay now. Next one. All right, so John Paul Warrenow. Sorry, I'm just turning over, guys. Yes, go on. Learning from you is a massive big favour. My favourite by far has been the Toad in the Hole. Simple, but everyone's family favourite. Do you know what? I totally agree with you. I loved the Toad in the Hole, but I also loved the sausage rolls and baked beans. <laughs> um, I love those. Sharon in chat lock says we're going to miss you uh, when you're on your break. Have a lovely time and hurry up and come back. I will. I de oh, thank you. Well, I definitely will. I'm going on. Actually, I'm working. <laughs> it's not going to be much of a break. I am working, but I can't wait to come back with summer food. Okay. Really, it is going to be healthy this time. This time okay. is... Yes. Boyd says the best bit has been a collapsing pastry on the rhubarb tart. That was a laugh. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you, that is one of my favourites as well. That collapsing, but who cares? It's only a tart. That's why. That's why. Actually, I always tell people, you never worry about anything like that. Right. I'm going. Judy Farrell says, "What her favourite moment was when you were cooking with your son Tom. It was great." Yeah, he was funny, wasn't he? Yeah, I took Rosemary Allison Morris, so another Rosemary, drinking a gin and tonic, Rosemary. I think you're fat. Oh, thank you so much. Cheers to that. Well, I think you're all fab as well. Absolutely. I've got to mention this one because it's our close friend Leslie Lee singing with love whilst and enjoying these with my friends. <laughs> I have to say, I don't agree with that. Okay, well, the Christmas show was very funny. It was, it was very funny. Now, let's just, we'll have some more in a minute. Get cracking. We'll have some more. Keep them up there. I'm now going to take a little bit of this, um, a tiny bit of this fat off, all right? Just a little bit. There we are, just a little bit. Okay, now... I'm just going to do this side. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm now going to now put in some butter and start basting. I'm going to put in some delicious some thyme, garlic. Oh, delicious. Okay. Now, basting that is very, very important, everybody. Basting is incredibly important. Right, now we're ready to go. So we're going to pop this on. Lovely flavours are happening now. I can smell already. I can smell it's happening. Oh, my gosh, it's wonderful. Oh, look at that. Now, you can see it's not too caramelised on the top. You're not getting a big crust, but big enough. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven for about eight minutes. So can you please time? Nothing like Siri, is there? Amazing. So, excuse me, guys. I'm just going to pop this in here. Right. Okay. Siri, I put it in. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, you don't talk Siri. Everybody loved your fish pie, by the way. That was a big hit. Especially when you were 
Thank you when you burn shit. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you that was very funny. That was very funny. The now, oh good, I'm glad you love the rhubarb tart. Well, everyone likes a good tart. Yeah, everybody likes a good tart. <laughs> That's Mark talking, by the way. Yes. Now we're going to be there, right? I'm now going to show you another. I'm going to start the ribeye steaks. So I'm going to put this on. Now this is different. The ribeye is different. Keep an eye. Yes, eight minutes, please. Oh well, it's now six minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. Right. Okay. Seven minutes. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Right. Next thing. Next ones. Ribeye. Season again. Now, do you notice I'm putting fine salt in? Because if I put fine salt on, that will work. If I put um, coarse sea salt, you'll show it. I might as well put it now also on this on the other ones as I'm doing it. So as I'm here. Right. There you are. Right. Now, so i am now got this. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil. I'm going to put this here. There we go. Get this hot. Now, I always tend to, I always tend to start cooking with a dry, I mean, start the dry pan. So I'm putting the dry pan in with a little bit of oil, not much, just a little bit. You do not need a lot. Right. So, we're going to just do this. Now, the most important thing is to get so you're not cooking it too quickly. Now, I'm going to put these probably on a slightly lower heat. I'll start high, turn down, because I'm not going to put them in the oven, actually. I'm only putting that one in the oven. So I'm going to start. So when you, when you come to do your ribeyes, okay, when you come to do your ribeye steaks, um, you can do it the way I'm showing you now, all right? So you start off by putting your first one in. And then second one. Do not touch. Just sit down, have a glass of wine, chill out, and talk about where you're going to go on holiday. <laughs> I love that. Rosemary, what wine are you drinking? Oh, this is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Show you. I'll show you. Right, it's called Stoneburn. It's a Pinot Noir 2000, 2018. Can you see that up there? Not if you, well, yeah, that's better. Turn it round, turn it the wrong way, Rosemary. Can you see it? Stoneburn Pinot Noir. Okay. It is a very, very good wine indeed. The problem is it's too quaffable. Oh, I'll tell you a story the other day. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot, totally forgot. I was going on a radio show, talk radio. And they phoned me at 20 past night. And I'd had a bottle of wine. In the evening, yes, in the evening, not in the morning. I'd had a bottle of wine. I couldn't believe it. And suddenly the phone goes and they say, it's talk radio, we want to Zoom. Oh, my goody art. Of course, it was a very interesting, it was a very interesting conversation. Um, let's put it that way. They asked me back again. It was very funny. Uh, but I declined because uh, yeah. <laughs> I was working today. It was meant to be today, but I'm working. Um, but um, it was quite interesting, but it was very, very funny. But this is so nice. It's delicious. It's, how much is a bottle? I think it's about 18 pounds a bottle. 20 Friends, pounds a bottle. a really nice quote here from um, David Boyd. The great thing is that you thought of something that goes wrong. So if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter. You can still get great results. Oh, Dave. Actually, I wanted you on today. We are today. I want. Yeah, yeah. Technically, we were trying to make this work, so you could come on. Your photographs, may I tell you, have won absolutely hands down. You have been photographing and sending us in photographs. They have been incredible, Dave. So thank you because we got them. Thank you so much because it meant so much to me. And also, I know you know about cooking. I know you know about stuff. But actually, I do hope that I have taught you some things as well as you've gone along, because you're a very knowledgeable man, very knowledgeable man. 
So anyway, it's been lovely having you, but we'll get we'll find a way of getting you on, okay, next time, which will be cool. Which will be summer food, salads, and all these gorgeousness. Lots of gorgeousness. Right now, we're doing these um steaks and we're going, we're going through. I'm you realize I'm not I can't touch them because again, if I touch them, I'm going to break the seal. Now, you notice one thing, I hope, is I didn't put the garlic and the butter and the thyme until I turned it over. You don't ever put it on the first on the first side. You always wait until you turn it around. And then you put it in, baste it, then you can turn it around again. But always, always make sure you you put it at the, basically you put it at the other side, on the other side, not on the first side, because otherwise you'll burn your butter. You don't want to do that. Or, or your, and your garlic as well. So now I'm going to turn this over. Let's have a look. Oh, lovely. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. Just a tad longer. And what I'm going to do, because now, after me saying to you, after me saying to you, um, don't put it in, I am going to put this in now and I'm going to turn it over straight away. Just so it softens it. There we are. Now I'm going to turn it over. Look at that. Right. Isn't that gorgeous? So it's crispy. I mean, it's caramelized, but not too much. Right. I'm going to now put in the thyme. You always put in your little bit of thyme, little bit of thyme, little bit of garlic. This is all very normal. You always do this. Whatever you do with your basing and cooking, you do this. Okay. Get. Oh, getting it all over the place. How long In here, about um three minutes. Now I'm going to baste it. Okay, I'm going to have a look now. Uh, one inch. Okay, now just leave those. Leave the steaks, and I'm now going to turn them down a bit. Now I'm going to get the other steak out of the oven. Right, and we're going to now put the thermometer in. Thank you, Siri. Okay, so let's look at this. So let's see whether this is done or not. Uh, we're going to put this in here. 48, 50, 53, 54, 55, that's it, 56, out, quick, it's done, enough, just over, so we're going to take this off, now remember, I'm going to, what is important is you must put it, that's when I cut it, we must put it onto a, can I have it here, yes, okay, Right, so what I do is, everybody, I pop it onto a grid like that, all right? Now, okay, that's pink actually in there now. It's pink rather than, now I'm just going to, rather than doing this. Now, the fillet steak. I'm now going to pop this in. Now, I'm going to make this blur, all right? Blur, not, not um, pink, blur. So here we go. I'm going to pop this in. As far as I'm concerned, you just cut, touch the pan and come out again. Because it's so beautiful and tender. There we are. Leave it. Now, let's pop this somewhere here. Now, whenever you're leaving your steak to, to go down, just cover it up so you don't want it to get cold. Just cover it up. Now, I'm just going to put this in. Right, that's it, they're done. So what I'm going to do is take these off and put these here. Okay, definitely done. Yep, all done. So I'll put this over here and I'm going to just do this, look. Oh, sorry, I've just tipped all the stuff off. There we go. Now, I might as well put this on here. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. Now, this is 
Yes, I do. I'll put it here. Right, we're going to put this here. There we go. Cover it up. I think this. Right. Now I'm onto my lovely thing. Now, what I'm going to do here is turn it over in a minute. You're hardly going to cook this at all. Very nearly done on that side. Just looking, oh, here. I'm looking for the butter, but I couldn't see it. Right. Again, I'm going to do the same as I, oh, actually, I'm not. I'm not, because it's pan's too small. So what I'm going to do is I am going to turn it over. There, look at that. Perfect. There's no crust on that. Nothing. It's just purely as it is. Butter goes in, time goes in. <laughs> Don't worry about the butter. It's all basting anyway. Right. Don't worry about it, you go. Don't worry, they're all laughing about the butter, but I don't care. No. But that's what restaurants do. Right. Look at that. So what we're going to do now, that's nearly cooked. Now, I want this to be really rare. I want it to be 45. Let's get there. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Well, they should be just now. If they want to cook their steaks, they put their steaks on now. If you want to put your steak on now, put it on. Otherwise, leave it till later. Right. There we are. Oh, really? Okay. That's cool. So I'll take this off. Right. I'm going to clear up a little bit. Now, I'm going to clear up a little bit. Here we are. My lovely plate. I'm still using my lovely hair. So that's cool. So, and that's why, you see, I've even used this today, which is quite cool. Um, you know, this, this thing. You know, I said I wasn't going to, but I have. Which is really important. Now, everything's important to me, isn't it? Right now. So, we're nearly ready. Come on. Let's guess. 45. Come on. 45. Oh, God, yes. Perfect. Done. Right. Okay, I'm now going to... So these now need to rest. Now, let's just pour this over. Okay. Don't waste the butter, Right. <laughs> Stop it. They're teasing me. Come get knotted. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is push this to Now, let me just show you. Let's just go through it, actually. So this is my one, which I did in the oven, which was a thicker piece. So this is my sirloin, which if you do the steaks, you can do it the other way. This is my my strip loin, not my strip loin, my ribeye, which I did a little bit. That is medium pink. That's pink. That is, no, that's medium pink, that's pink, and that's rare. So we've got the three different pieces of meat. I think I'm going to see if I did it correctly, okay? So let's just have a little go, because I want to see if I, just to see if I got it right. This is going to be a telltale sign, you know. So first of all, make sure your knife is sharp. Very important. I love my French, my French thing. Now, if you're going to use, okay, if you're going to cut it, what's important is to put it on a, a mat with either a J cloth or something like that, tea towel, but just let the blood come out. Right, now, this is rare. I'm just going to cut. Okay, two pieces. Oh my gosh, it melts. Look at that. Look at that. Now, if I put it on there, what I can do, if I put it on here, what I can do is 
I'll just leave it to let it go. This, this is my fillet steak. This is my ribeye. It's my ribeye. Take that one. Let's add more flavour. Right. So, okay. So this one is beautiful and medium pink, which is perfection. Okay. Now you think that that looks the same as that? It's not. This is definitely cooked a little bit more. Okay. Now. So that's done. And this, which is cooked even more, okay, pink. Do you know, it's just, it, it's literally just, right, it's literally just in my, in my hand, it's, you can feel, you can tell, you can tell the, um, you can tell the, 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 the juiciness of it all and also the whole thing just melts in your hand, in your, in your thing. So that's the difference. So you've got this lovely, really rare one. You've got a little bit more pink rare, but it doesn't, but it is that done. If I got this one a little bit, I'd be a little bit more well done. Yeah. You've got a better example for you there. delicious it's very subtle but it's hugely that you can tell the difference it's very subtle now but it's, it's if somebody was in a restaurant believe me and they ordered from me they ordered from me a rare that is what they would get medium rare that's what they get and pink medium pink that's what they would get. And they would be happy and they would be right. And if they sent it back, I would say they don't know what they're talking about. Right. Now, with this, I'm going to serve, if I could just have that. So I'm going to just take this off for a minute, actually, because no point in me cutting this up now. Take this off, because I'm going to use this. So, thank you. This is my chimichurri sauce. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take, this is creamy, look at that. Oh, this is so yummy. Look, bacon, gorgeousness. Look at that. I'm going to put bacon and onion. That really is yummy. And the thing is, it goes so well with what we've done. That's the thing, it goes so well. So I'm going to pop that to one side. Whoopsie. They're so naughty at teasing me here. Right. So here, so I'll put that there. Just going to clean this up. So here, what I would do is, I will use what I've done. Okay, I will. I never use the outside normally, but I shall today. God, they're all delicious. Look, I've used the outside, everything. Oh. See, for me, actually, that, for me, <coughs> I know you guys will probably love it, some of you, because I know some people do. Um, but for me, that's overcooked. But that's fine. So I'm going to put that like that, so it's round like that. I'm now going to take a little spoon. And it's important... So you don't need much. It's important that you have a little bit. That to me is the most perfect dinner. You've got the most beautiful, with a glass of wine, you've got the most beautiful chimichurri, the most wonderful steak. Now, what I've hoped and what I try to do this evening is to show you how to cook steak. Because steak is, to cook it right, it's quite important. To know how far you can go is quite important. Temperature is important. Temperature is very important. But that's delicious. So I do hope you enjoy it. I'm going to um, 
certainly enjoy it later myself. So that'd be absolutely fabulous. Listen, I'm going to sit down with you. Can I ask you if there are any more gorgeous, gorgeous um, times that you've enjoyed or extra special times that you would like? Anything, anything you, you've got, anything that's been the most useful, apart from David, which has been lovely, is not to be afraid of cooking, that there's always a way out. That was really useful, Dave, saying that. Sarah. very much the family side very entertaining love the rhubarb tart as well um hilarious saturday evening and carol hunter said she's picked up so many tips from you and loved the chicken burgers so oh family feel. oh my gosh that's so nice well we're going to continue with the family feel we will be doing master classes because that'll be slightly different i'm going to be doing one about once every three weeks, maybe, or once every two weeks, depending. We haven't quite decided. But there'll be what you'll be able to do with that. Those who really want to sort of elevate their food to a higher standard, not the fact that I haven't dumbed down at all on any of the techniques. That's the thing. I've just done family cooking. But if anybody wants to get into what I call a subject like bread or, or boning or sauces or whatever you want to do, I'm actually going to do it and also be quite useful if you have any ideas that you would like to know more in depth because I love doing these masterclasses. We will be taking, there'll be tipping, there'll be a, a ceiling because there'll be Zoom and there will be, a, they will be not for only an hour, it'll go on for a while. So you have to be prepared to sort of do the day really. Hey, hey, you love the sausage rolls as well. Yeah, I like the sausage rolls too. Uh, we may kind of give give people the option to pick one, put up three dishes, and if you pick one, then the one with the most hits, if you like, will get cooked with you. Okay. So all sorts of ideas. Okay. Um, so come, will you come up with some ideas if you'd like in the summer, in about six weeks' time? Pork was a massive hit as well, and the oh. and pancakes were a oh. massive hit. Brilliant. Oh, so glad you love those pancakes. Do you know what? The children, my grandchildren, totally adore them. Oh, and Claire Bell says she'd like to see how to make bread. Perfect. I'm doing a bread masterclass, which is really cool. So you'll you'll get on that, I hope. Um, so that'll be that will be about three hours, but it'll have to be. But you know what? It'll be brilliant, brilliant. People have learned a lot, Rosie. Yes, I am so pleased you've learned a lot because that's what I have tried to do. Apart from being family food, I've tried to give you information that you can take into everyday cooking, but not dumbing down in any way whatsoever. Still doing it from a chef's point of view making sure that it's done properly. Why would I dumb it down? Because, you know, you've got to know how to do things and that's why you make a better product. You know what, Thing, the little tip I'm going to give you, I'm going to pass, sort of pass you with um, at the end, a, a, depart, a part, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to depart you with. Rosemary, can I read this out from James Byford? Yes. Well, this is depressing. Rosemary lives just a couple of doors down from me. Rosemary's preparing an amazing meal. My wife is treating me to beans on toast. <laughs> This is a massive culinary disparity between neighbours. Hashtag pray for me. <laughs> that's actually really funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's actually very, very funny. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Uh, have you just found me? I've been on for months. Every every Saturday. I've not had a weekend off. Not a weekend off for months. Anyway, um, and I'm still going to talk. Neither has Martin. No, Martin hasn't either. Martin hasn't. Mark's been helping me out, Mark, no. and absolutely loads. So I want to thank you to my team. I've got a great team. I've got my son, Tom. I've got Luca, uh, my grandson. I've got all sorts of people. I have been very lucky. I've got a lot of support. I've got my cousins and my Simon, who does the editing. And I've got Roz, who does PR. I've got lots of people behind the scenes who work really hard. And Ed on photography, he started us all off. I, people have worked very hard for this to happen because you know what? I'm useless on tech. I can cook, but that's just about all. <laughs> but I'm going to impart you with, oh, my new book. Here we are. Right, it's not my new book. They have just reprinted everybody, just reprinted my new my book, Cookie Course. Please do get it. It's really good. And it's just come out. We'll put the link so you can get it. We'll link it up. Now, the other thing is, 
I've also got a book coming out next year in February, um, which is terribly exciting. It's a murder mystery. And it's all about food. <laughs> so during lockdown, not only have I been teaching you lot how to cook, but I've also been writing a murder mystery. So it's called The Last Supper, and you can pre-order it on Amazon. It's called, and I've called her Prudence Bolstrode Murder Mysteries by Rosemary Schrager. <laughs> Even when I say that, I laugh because it's hysterical. Anyway, it's good fun. So listen, everybody, do do get it because if you pre-order it, you'll get it early. And it's actually already on sale. So there you go. So The Last Supper, uh, Prudence Bolstrode, Murder Mysteries by Rosemary Schrager. And of course, this book as well. So please do get it. Anyway, that's what I'm imparting you with. So I would say, make sure you season things properly. Make sure you don't, make sure you don't fiddle with your food. Food needs to be treated with great respect. And make sure you buy local from your local farm shop because, or your local butcher, because that is where the best produce is. So I would say thank you for joining me. And I'm looking forward to this dinner tonight. And I'm going to say thank you. And I will see you all soon after my filming. Okay. Lots of love, everybody. Bye. And Amanda, I'm going to give you a ring. Okay. Bye.